we mentioned in the last video that as we hit we, we apply heat to this green filament we're going to be generating more electrons that flow of electrons is going to be measured as a the tube current and it's going to be measured in ma's in terms of the potential between the cathode and the anode that creates kvps and the electrons there for example for one kvp of potential an electron that travels through that potential is said to have one kev of energy and those two definitions and physical characteristics of our x-ray beam are going to be very important for every different modality that we use the other example that i wanted to to mention is that kvps are usually thought of as a factor that contributes more to the change in contrast of your image and it is more important for radiation purposes in the sense that once we double our kvp we are actually increasing the radiation dose to the patient by a factor of four so we're squaring that uh, kvp to get our increase in radiation dose on the other hand when we're talking about ma's there's a linear proportion so if we double the um, the number of x-rays or we double the ma's that leads to a doubling of the number of x-rays we're actually doubling the radiation dose so it's a linear relationship when we're talking about the ma's or the M mas uh, when we do that increase different from when we do an increase in the kvp settings and i added here a list of some examples of what will be a typical ma setting for fluoroscopy and how it increases all the way to 1000 for angiography and a cardiac cath in terms of the kvp mammography is one of the lowest um, examinations in terms of kvp setting well uh, the 140 kvps for ct are is a setting that's more similar to what we use in regular uh, chest radiograph for example and that being said that has a, a an implication in radiation dose i think that will be the, the most important one and and the other implication we'll have is that for when we're dealing with mammography we usually have a small focal spot and the the term of the focal spot is where the the specific area in the target that the x-rays are are hitting and or the electrons are, are hitting the target and from there we're generating the x-ray beam so a small focal spot is going to improve our spatial resolution but it also is going to tolerate a smaller amount of heat so for that purpose, we need to make sure we use a lower KVP. In a sense, this turns out to be to work well for mammography because in mammography, we're dealing with tissue that we don't want to over penetrate and the differences that we're trying to catch are going to be very subtle, small calcifications. We're really, that's the main thing we're looking for in mammography, is those small calcifications that might be an indication uh, that something's growing there, uh, like a cancer, for example. I think I mentioned in the prior video what was the anode angle, and th that's really based on the line focus principle, and, and you can look that up online, but aside from the heat generation, the idea of angling is that you have a, a, a wider or a larger surface area. However, when you do the when the ex the photons are being expelled from the X-ray tube, you actually have a smaller effective uh, focal uh, focal spot size. And the angle that we usually use is about a 12.5 degree angle. And the other thing that, although that's convenient for us, the other thing that we have to have in mind is that this angle creates what's known as the heel effect and the heel effect is very known well known in radiology because it, it creates a difference in the the way our our x-ray 
is generated. And what happens, for example, is that once our x-ray hits here, some of the photons are going to travel and you see they're going to be traveling through this material and then exiting the window. When that happens, that's called the heel effect and those electrons there are going to have a little bit more attenuation when compared to this electrons here. So for example, for mammography, we want to make sure the x-ray beam, the cathode area is actually towards the chest wall. And that way we guarantee that the heel effect doesn't have such a severe effect in the sense that we're using the strongest beam to penetrate the area where we have the most tissue and the anode side of the beam which is the one that's affected more by the heel effect then we can use it for the other portions of, of our of our image and that also happens for x-rays chest x-rays and we also adjust for that so just have in mind that there's some variation due to this angle and that we have some benefit in heat dissipation, but we also have to account for that heel effect. And, and based on that, we're going to position our patient different in relation to the, to the x-ray tube. Finally, I wanted to, to mention an, an additional... So we have the E here for the envelope of the x-ray tube. This is usually lead. And we know lead is very good for attenuating x-rays. We have O for oil, and that's we're trying to keep this as cool as possible. And that, that was the reason why we, we keep it like that in order to minimize the heat and, and being able to continue to use our x-ray tube for a longer period of time. Because as we mentioned before, up to 99% of our x-rays are going to be generating heat. And last but not least, I wanted to cover an important fact, and this is really more regulation. And although we have this entire x-ray tube covered with lead, we do recognize there's some leakage radiation. And for regulation purposes, our leakage radiation is limited to less than 100 millirangans per hour. Rangans are going to be the, the measurement that we use for radiation. And so that 100 millirangans per hour is going to be measured when the x-ray tube is being used at the maximum kvp and maximum ma and the distance is at one meter so all this is very technical but it shows you how this is regulated and it also shows you that although we have a, a very good lead covering there's always some leakage radiation and that's important obviously for radiation safety purposes